Welcome to the podcast. This is our special episode for Valentine's Day. So today we're going to be talking about love. We're going to be talking about connection. We're going to be talking about twin flames and a bunch of different topics that you guys will be interested in. The love special. (laughs) Yeah. So Kelly Kelly wore her red today because it's all about that red. It's all about that love. And she has a a sexual energy to everyone. (laughs) Every. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Maybe we can say sensual. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh. gosh. No, hey, I'm, I'm <laughs> we're really getting into it with yeah, this episode. No, Stick around yeah. to what we talk about at the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right off the bat with that. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, guys, we like to have fun on the podcast. Of course, we're going to talk about serious topics and help you guys, but we're going to be joking around, too. We're going to be having a little bit of fun. So we believe in laughter because laughter raises your vibration and in the sense of the word, you're lighting up, you know, just lighten up if you can laugh things off and just have fun oh definitely and lighten up literally means you'll raise your vibration and therefore go towards the light lighten your weight oh absolutely so speaking of light and lightening up and speaking of love we did the uh, episode last week that was recommended to us by our friend vinye and Mm -hmm. basically it was talking about with uh swamiji and it was talking about a concept called sarvatma pava sarvatma Pava. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Now, what this concept means is it means people, if you're if an English speaking person, you're aware of someone saying they have a big heart, they're big hearted. And what it means is having love for people around you. Now, what Sarvatma Pava means is having that love expansion times a million, times a billion, times an infinite amount. Because once you get to a certain level of enlightenment and love, that love that you have just grows and expands. Most people, whenever they're young, they only love themselves. They're a child. They're selfish. That's why it's childish to be selfish, because you only love yourself. You're only thinking about yourself and self-preservation, but you're only concerned about self-preservation in yourself. Now, whenever you get older, You start to love your parents. You start to love your siblings. You start to love your family. And then as time goes on, you love your uncles, your aunts, and then even your friends. Everybody has a friend that they love like their family or even more than some of their family. So that concept, Sarvatma Pava, is basically extending that out to everybody because why would you just hold that within your immediate family? Why wouldn't you extend it to to a stranger, to somebody that you don't know, to somebody that you've never met before? Yeah, that was a really awesome analogy. I liked how that was said in that video. It was very, very insightful because it's these things that, you you know, you grasp and you understand. But when you put it a certain way, it's just you unlock it even more. Mm -hmm. So I never really thought about that, that from the baby, they can't really have that developed sense of love quite yet. And it's all about, it's almost like a survival mode. They just do, they're off like just survival instincts. They, And it's all about themselves when you are like that. And then as their brain develops, their love concept grows. And they do have that fondness and a true sense of love for their parents. And it goes to the family. And as he said, why can't it just never stop growing? Why can't every single person you come across in the day a random person at the grocery store why can't you extend them that love just as much or even people not around you people you've never met before people you don't even know exist hey on this planet or other planets (laughs) there's a lot of beings out there to love and love is not limiting love actually is expansion and bad or low vibrational feelings are suck you in or lower you but expansion is what love brings exactly so you said lower vibrations suck you off (laughs) hey (laughs) suck you in suck you in 
I couldn't. What's the opposite of expansion? Did, contraction. Contraction. Yeah, I couldn't think so of the right contract. words. I just like suck you in. Like yeah, go, yeah. Go back in. So we're just joking around a little bit, today, guys. <laughs> So <laughs> we're going to have to edit some stuff out of the podcast this episode. Um, this one's not rated G. So, <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> yeah, like Kelly said, so love expands. Love is building with people. Love is helping people. Love is whenever you want to see the best for somebody else and you want to share as much as you can. Because that's what it's all about. It's all about sharing. It's all about expansion. It's all about connection. Whenever you're selfish, whenever you're childish, whenever you're doing the opposite of love, which is the opposite of God, that's whenever you're keeping secrets. That's whenever you're not sharing. That is whenever you want the worst for somebody. That is whenever you don't want to help someone. That's whenever it's all about me, me, me. I need it. And you're thinking in a, in a belief system of lack. You're thinking that there's not enough. When there is more than enough, there is way more than enough. And that's a problem that a lot of people have, Kelly. They just don't know how to think that way. Even yeah. when you tell them, how do I think that way? I don't know this person. Right, right. Even earlier today, we were merging in the lane and then someone was merging too. They didn't look. I was. I look every time, but they didn't look. And then we get off the highway. Then they're trying to get mad and all this crazy stuff. And yeah. of course, we just ignored them. Because what are we doing? What are we doing here? But people in that vibration are thinking in a you versus me mentality. They're not thinking in love like a stranger. I'm thinking I love that person. I want the best for them. So whenever I see someone acting like that or having some kind of road rage or any kind of mental breakdown where they're getting really emotional like that over something that's so simple, what I'm truly wondering is what is going on in their life that's making them do that or think that or act that way? Because a lot of people have hidden trauma, hidden issues, hidden problems that they're not resolving from within themselves that they need to resolve to get through it. Because if you're acting, if if one little incident is going to make you that is really your fault, is going to make you that angry, that mm-hmm. crazy, then of course you have a mental and emotional maturity problem. But there's a deeper layer and level to it where there's something going on where you're lacking that love within you. And you're not having that respect for others as you should have that respect. And you're not having that respect for yourself either, which leads us into talking about self-love. Yeah, now, because I was actually going to say that a lot of that can also have to do with insecurities. And if you are insecure with yourself, you don't have a full love for yourself. And a lot of problems out there, really the core of it all is not your self-love isn't there. And so if you Absolutely. don't have your self love, of course, you can't expand that love out like we were just talking like you start first, then you have the capability of to go to parents and spread that out. But if you don't even have you, your immediate surroundings, what you live inside this body, you, mm. your existence, your immediate existence, then there's no way you can expand it out. Kelly, you're so absolutely right with what you're saying, because you have to have that love within yourself. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it for yourself, everything is a projection. If you're angry at someone else, it's a projection. You're angry at yourself. If you're feeling mad, if you're calling someone out, if it's you versus me, there's something within you that you need to solve. So having that love for yourself is really going to just change the way that you view the world. It's going to change the way that people view you as well. So, Kelly, let's just people want to know. How do you find a stable and nice relationship? Because you're a beautiful woman. You're the perfect woman. You're intelligent. (laughs) You're beautiful. You're nice. You're kind. You're feminine. You cook. You clean. You take care. You do everything that a man would want. How does a man get a woman like you? How does that (laughs) even happen? What kind of qualities do they need to have? What do they need to do to get a woman like you? Well, that's an interesting question, but I have to say, you know, despite all of these things, I actually myself struggled with self-love for quite a long time. And at first I didn't even realize that I did because I didn't ask really myself if I love myself and I didn't really think about it 
And I didn't really do any deep self-analysis about me, my actions. But if you do have a really big insecurity like that or a really big problem with self-love, it's going to pour out in some kind of way, right? And you're going to be looking to have that love filled, most likely in unhealthy ways. And so eventually you can either learn the easy way because when we sign up to learn these things, it's pretty much going to be thrown at us to learn it because God and all of our guides are going to be making the circumstances come up for us to learn it because that's our mission to come here and learn it and to overcome it. And we all agreed before we came here, like, guys, make sure I'm going to learn what I need to learn. You got to be there watching out because guys don't only watch out for us to make sure good things happen or, well, I guess you could say perceived as good or bad. They're also going to be there helping us to make sure we learn the things we want to learn because it's really the purpose that we're here. So they don't want us to be here for nothing. They want us to succeed. You. Our guides, oh, God, and, and our own higher mind. For a second. Oh no, no, no! <laughs> I was like, "What guides?" No, are you guides. About? Guides are spiritual guides. Are angels? So, so answer the question. Okay. Guys. Cut, cut, cut the crap. Okay, so how does a man get a woman like you? Okay, so I guess if you get past all that, ladies, even if you're beautiful, anything like that, you got to make sure you're a good place with your self love, so that you can. How does the a love. man get a woman like you? The man, well, he has to be, Just be enough of a good, it. of an honorable man to for you to want to serve him in all those ways and take care of him. Just like anybody, if if someone is loving to you and you respect them, then you'll want to be that person to help them out and do even more of the great things that they're doing and be part of their mission. Okay. So just be honorable. No. What else? People, because this is the stuff people want to (laughs) know. They look at you. They want to know this stuff. It's going to help them. Um, Just be honest about it and tell people the kind of qualities, what you're looking for, how they can get a woman like yourself. Let's say you're single. We're not together. How, How would a guy get a woman like you? Mm, I don't know. A lot <laughs> of times, a lot of times, you're you. overthinking everything. It's very simple. The kind of woman that I'd be looking for is a feminine woman, woman that can take direction, a woman that's intelligent, strong, has a good family, and you get together because Kelly has a really good family, and they're all strong. They're tall. They're healthy. And they're all beautiful as well. And they all have a spiritual connection as well. And I want a woman that's going to be close with their family because whenever we got married, that really became my family. So you that's the way that I'm thinking about it. And a lot of men are thinking about it. You want a woman that's going to have a good family connection. You want her to be feminine. You want her to listen to you. You want a woman that's going to take direction because. But then again, a lot of men aren't good leaders as well. So mm. it really just depends on the guy, I suppose, because you can't. I mean, certain relationships are just different. Like certain women like to wear the pants in the relationship, but I personally don't. I like to be in more of a traditional man woman relationship. I rather I want my man to be the leader of me because <laughs> as you can see, sometimes I don't know. <laughs> And I can't make the decision. Well, I can, but I don't really want to. Yeah, some women, they want to. I mean, that was a simple question. I figured you could answer a simple question. But if you've been with someone, I get it. I'm asking questions on the spot. But, you know, I get it. But, you know, it's a a podcast. You know what I mean? I thought I could ask you a question. I never thought we were going to talk about this. Yeah, I mean, I get it. But I thought I could ask you a little simple question. But, um, I'm I all mean, hyping all the her, I'm hyping her intelligence. I'm saying how great she is. You know, I ask her one question and she just shuts uh. down completely. But um, no, guys, honestly, if you've never been on a podcast or been on this kind of forum, it is kind of like an on the spot kind of thing. But that's why I was saying a lot of times it's practice for us too. But that's why I kept saying it's simple 
because you're over a lot of times you oversimplify or overthink things, not you, just people in general. Mm-hmm. You overthink or oversimplify or uh, you overthink them. And then next thing you know, you don't know what to say when it's very simple. You just think about what would I want? Like, and you can just start with simple stuff. Okay, well, I don't want some, someone that's going to be mean. I don't want someone that's going to be this. Well, or all that I could think of is I would want someone to be how exactly how you okay, are. Okay, well, how am I? Well, you're very, very, you have a very big heart, but you're definitely in your divine masculine. And there's not a lot of feminine attributes about you. And, you know, everyone's on their own little bit of a combination of their percentage of how much masculine they are, how much feminine they are. But I have a lot of feminine. And so it's like we need that yin yang balance. So I like someone who's very, very masculine and a leader brave i know is always thinking about protecting me and has a really deep rooted heart but it sounds weird but like for you you're someone who i i've said this before not on here but that you have like layers to your personality and it's like you have the layer of you that's really really funny and always joking all the time and like you seem all lighthearted, but like I know you have like deeper <laughs> layers of you that aren't really opened up a lot. That like more like I see them more, and it's hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> and I know if any problem comes up in our unit and our family, you know our our fam- our unit of two now, but. When we have kids, like I know that you'll be a good father and always put us first. I think that's a really big thing that you're a very uh, selfless person for the people you love. And I think that's very, very big for a man because you have to be, you know, men typically don't really have the choice if even if they're working a job, hopefully they love it. But a lot of men work jobs all day long, 12 hours a day that they actually don't even really they like it enough but it's like they don't love it but what they don't like their job yeah and a lot don't like it at all but guess what they have that pride that comes with it that knowing that they're doing this for their family and they're working so hard for their family that's what they enjoy and to me that's what makes a real man is someone who those things make him prideful and it makes it all worth it to know that he's providing for his family he's the one they rely on to me that's a very divine masculine thing so for instance me I used to not really cook I've always been a good cleaner but I used to not really cook but it came to a situation where as man and woman what was best for again like our family unit in a health sense yeah when I had a medical situation she had to take up and yeah cooking every day and cooking isn't my favorite activity but I do it at least five days a week dinner and then I also take care of lunch, breakfast, whatever. But it's not my favorite activity, but it's the same thing where where (laughs) (laughs) a man is prideful. And for me, it's become something where I'm very, very happy that I'm in charge of our family's nutrition. And when we have our children, I'll know exactly what they're eating. And I've learned about good ingredients and I've even learned about good herbs. And it's up to me that our, you know, what's going inside of our bodies is good. And I'm in charge of that. And I'm making sure everyone's in a healthiest state that they can be and so those are just kind of two different sides where it's not even sometimes about the activity but when you're in the divine masculine divine feminine it's not about you going back to the whole thing it's not about loving yourself because this all stems from love and if your self-love is big enough and you love everyone around you these are the actions that come around with loving people (coughs) Because love is not just a feeling, it's an action, especially in marriage. Yeah, so, again, you just nailed it and just went on a nice soliloquy that was very eloquent and perfect. So, you have it within you. So, whenever I ask you questions like that, I'm not trying to get you or get, I I got you. I'm just, because people really want to know. This is really good for our viewers. I know. People see a woman like you and and they think, what does she want? It's not a trick question. It's actually, what do you want yeah. in a man? And how will they get you? Yeah. So something like for, for me, I, again, everyone's different. But like for me, I could never be with a man who wouldn't fight for me. Like if something dangerous happened, like that was 
that sounds like such an unattractive thing to me so that's just one thing but you know that pretty much sums it up but i think you're very very funny which i really enjoy and you definitely have really really big goals and you will work for something no matter what no matter how long it takes makes it you will make it happen and you're very driven and you have a really big purpose uh for the world beyond yourself this whole platform of han meditations is for the purpose of helping people and that's extremely beautiful thing and you have great energy and overcome anything that comes your way and you're a warrior that's what i think is attractive as a male okay so i like that you got to be a warrior you got to be strong <laughs> yeah a warrior. you got to be a sure. masculine man you got to be a protector mm-hmm. and not a guide? lazy what about a guide a, a what a guide oh yeah absolutely like you even talking about before about my self-love journey you were a huge person helping me and i mean you say i'm all these things now as a woman but I've grown a lot. I've done a lot of growing to become the woman I am now. Yeah, and you've helped me, me do that. But to me, you haven't grown at all. Oh. You've always <laughs> been this person. Yeah, I've just so found to me, myself to more. To me, you you've say. always been that person. Mm-hmm. I was just showing you who you truly were. Yeah. I wasn't, you know, changing you or anything. I was just showing you this is who you truly are. Yeah. And it's a beautiful cycle whenever you can bring someone to be their ultimate self and bring them to their true purpose and guide them in that way. So a woman in my, this this is what we prefer. You're free to do whatever you want. Exactly. If you want to date a guy that's weak and this isn't an insult, just physically weak or very passive and just very feminine not that women are weak or anything like that. Let's just let's just talk freely without. Yeah. So there's so all different you, types of people out yeah. there. So if you want to date, let's just say a very feminine man, that's what you want. But that's not what Kelly wanted. And I didn't want to date a masculine woman who's mm-hmm. going to be trying to control everything and be in charge and fight me over every little thing and testosterone is pumping through her veins and she wants to, you know, fight and argue and you know, all this crazy situations can occur. That is not what a man like myself would want. As Kelly said, I'm a very masculine man. So I need that feminine energy to balance me out. And Kelly's very feminine. So she needs that masculine energy to balance her out. Mm -hmm. And once you have the two, it's a perfect yin and yang scenario where it combines together and we can be a team and be divine masculine with divine feminine. And once you have that to me, man, it's the perfect scenario. Because God made a man and a woman for a reason. Now, whatever you want to do or whatever you want to be, that's your, per- your that's your choice. But there's a man and a woman for a reason so that all humans could exist. So that we could produce children and have babies and there's a different dynamic to it where you can experience different things by being a woman or being a man so i haven't had any past lives as a woman yet and i've probably done like up to eight or so yeah so a lot of my lives have just been men Mm -hmm. and they've been very like burly men and traveling and living free lives yeah and it's just it's such not a cool. Scared of anything. Yeah, not not living in fear or afraid of anything, and it's such a fun process. Because right now I'm truly with my soulmate. Like this isn't. I always thought like growing up a soulmate. Like I never really gave that much thought to it. Yeah. But I didn't really know if I believed in it either. Yeah. Like I thought you just kind of pick someone and whatever you're together. But now that I'm with Kelly, it's like this is actually my real soulmate. Like there's a a serious connection that goes beyond anything I've ever experienced. I mean, a love that I could never even understand. Like (laughs) the English language isn't complicated enough to describe her beauty to me and how much I love her and respect her. And it's just such a beautiful process. Whenever you find someone that you can truly share life with 
and how we were saying, you know, hiding and all that. I want to share everything with her. So there's always every experience I have, I want to talk to her, even if she thinks it's, you know, <laughs> funny or if she's mad about it, whatever. <laughs> I want to tell her about it because it's like to me, it's all it's all love anyways. So yeah. we always do basically everything together. Yeah, I, I worry. To the point where it might be like too much, <laughs> Co- you know, like we don't even leave the house like issues. without each other. Like, yeah, like we should probably, you know. I honestly don't know any other couple that is together as much as. Yeah, like, I, no don't, bias. I don't know if it's possible. Like, yeah, I honestly don't even know if it's a good thing. So I'm not, bi- <laughs> I'm not biased yeah, here. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. just saying <laughs> because it's not like we ever I think meant. It's good. I think so because it's not like we ever meant to do all of our work stuff together and all yeah just all came together, together like that, except yeah. gaming he has his gaming that i am not yeah i'm, I'm out there with the boys you while know? i'm cooking and cleaning those are my I'm out there with the boys activity. man the fly squad man yeah. <laughs> yes that's, shout out that's to that's my boys boy man shout we've to, done a little shout bit out of to gaming. my boy jared shout out ray of course you know turner <laughs> sam mike you know what i mean those are the boys dude so yeah. We're, we're on all the time. If you guys want to see us in Warzone, you can see us in Warzone. But shout out to my boys, man. <laughs> yeah, every as much as you know, he would enjoy being around the female energy. You got to get a little bit of the the boy energy up in there. Oh yeah, you have to, right. because whenever you're around other men, and this is the thing too. I was talking like, number one, I love my friends. Like I actually love them so much because I love everybody and and everyone that I don't even know. So just imagine how much love I have for my family and my friends. To me, they are my family. So Mm -hmm. when I'm gaming with my boys, it's like actual, like you just feel the love within you. You feel the camaraderie. And like I said, you are who your friends are. And then all my friends I'm gaming with and playing with, they're all very smart. They're all very intelligent. I'm like not even joking. Like half of them went to Harvard Business School <laughs> and Columbia. And, you know, it's just all of them are just really smart guys, whether they have their own businesses or they or they work in a successful field or that PE firms. It doesn't really matter what they are, but they're all successful in their own way and they're all working and going hard which i can absolutely appreciate Mm -hmm. so to me i like being around people that are go-getters that are going to get it if all my friends are just lazy all day and all they're doing is smoking pot and they're just playing video games and they're talking about how they're going to do something and they don't do it and they're negative all the time and they're angry and they're emotionally unstable that's who you're going to be now again i believe that marijuana and cannabis the real term cannabis i believe cannabis is a teacher and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it from my perspective now there are some people that can have adverse effects from it but i believe anything that's grown from the ground is a teacher and it helps you get on a a positive vibration and can teach you a lot of things but there are people that abuse it and go too far with it and if they go too far with it then they can get to the point where Let's say you, you let's say you smoke every day, but you're just smoking at night. That's what's up or after a workout and you mm-hmm. give yourself a treat. But there's some people that take it too far and they wake up, they get blasted. Next thing you know, they don't get anything done. Some people can operate like that. Some mm-hmm. a lot of people can't. And okay. a lot of people say they can, but they can't. Right. So I wouldn't want to be around people that all they do is smoke and that's their whole personality and they're not achieving anything because we all know people like that. And you know, I'll send them love. I'll help them where I can. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I know a lot of people who are like that. And it it just to the point where it's just selfish and they see everything as you versus me because they can't get out of their own head and they haven't worked on themselves in the way they need to work on. But, you know, I have love for everybody and everything. And I am grateful to cannabis and a lot of the teacher plants that are out there like ayahuasca. I haven't tried that, but I'm grateful that it's there and then other people seem to enjoy it. Yeah, because I think when a lot of times people are in that you versus me mindset, even for their own friends, it's because they haven't really done the first step of self-development, which is acknowledging that everything in your life is your fault, good or bad. So they don't 
you know, deep down, they know where they're at in life and it's not where they want to be. Like, it's just the way it is. And they know that deep down. But how do you change that? Well, you decide to change and admit that to yourself that it's all because of you and only you can change it for the better. Absolutely. Only you. So they don't want to admit that to themselves because... If you have a lot of insecurities, if your self-love's not really there, it feels like the most horrible thing in the world. Because if your mindset, usually if you have a lot of insecurities, you kind of have a guilt mindset and you have a lot of things about yourself that you need to get over. So admitting that to yourself is just going to lay on the guilt. But that's why you have to get your self-love in, in a good place and change the way you think about yourself because... The same thing can be a neutral thing, but your mind is what makes it good or bad You're based absolutely off right. your it's beliefs. It's all about perception. Right. And taking so, responsibility is important Yeah. because guess what, guys? You have to look yourself in the mirror. No one's going to do it for you. Mm-hmm. So if you look yourself in the mirror and you're, and you're lying to yourself, that's what it's going to be. Now, there's a fine line between delusion and desire. Now, if you desire and say, I want to be a millionaire, I'm going to be one. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be one. I am one in my mind and I'm going to move accordingly. That's one thing. But if you're saying, hey, I'm going to be I deserve to have this money and I'm not doing anything to achieve it. And you look at other people and you're jealous of them and you have hate in your heart. And why do they have this? And I should be having this. And you right. feel, you know, and you're not looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, oh, well, I'm not doing this, this and that, this. I'm not working towards it. I'm not actually living in my purpose. Though that's delusion. So a lot of people are delusional and they don't even realize it. You have to change your mindset from a delusional mindset to a realistic and desirable mindset. I wouldn't even say realistic because you don't have to be realistic yeah. because what does that word even mean? Because mm-hmm. anything is possible. So I'm not saying be realistic in the terms of, hey, let's just um only do what people tell you you can do. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying realistic as in this is what's going on in my life right now because I can measure it right now. Let's just say right now I'm not making any money right now. I'm moved back in with my parents right now. I'm just, I don't have a car right now. I don't have a job. There's literally nothing going for me. Those are the facts right now. But who do I want to be? I want to be a person that has multiple properties. I want to be a person that is a multimillionaire, maybe billionaire. And I want to have my own companies. I want to run them successfully. And I want to have a job that I love that I can run and I can do it every single day. And it doesn't feel like work. Well, you can look at your first situation and say, this is where I am now. But in my mind right now, I'm going to switch it. And I'm going to believe that I'm that person who already has all these things. And because of that, I'm going to move accordingly and act like I already have those things. If we just say, hey, I believe that I already have it. I have it in my mind, but you're not acting like it, then you don't truly have it because you're not moving it forward in the physical realm of reality. That's how our reality works. It's a physical world. So you have to see it in your mind, but you also have to be acting it out. Because once you, if you want to heal your body, you have to realize that there's nothing to heal in the first place. Mm -hmm. It seems like a simple concept, but it really is more complicated than it is. Because number one, you have to get your mind to the point where you believe that there's nothing to heal. If you see symptoms, if you see whatever going on (laughs) and you're thinking, well, this this isn't going this way. Yeah. Then how could I be? Look what's happening. Look what's happening. But if you say, I don't care what's happening, I know that I'm healthy in my mind. I know that I'm healthy in my body and I'm acting it out because I'm taking all the precautions and all the steps because what would a healthy person do? They would work out. They would eat right. They would be meditating. They'd be journaling. They would be doing this, 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 and this, whatever aligns in your spirit to do. That is what a healthy person would do. And you just... Just write it down. This is what a healthy person would do. This is what a millionaire would do. They would do these things every single day. They do these things. And then you get up and you do those things. And then you become that person. But you can't say, hey, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to do this. And you're not doing anything to progress it. You're not doing any work at all to progress your goals. It's not going to happen. No one's going to give it to you. You have to take it. Yeah. And... That's why we've kind of gotten to an era where 
Some people want to skip over that big step because there's new money making opportunities these days that seem like it can just happen so quick. And, you know, like apparently people can just overnight make all this money with crypto with so many different things out there sports betting just certain just hustles that are popular but the greatest part of it is the journey that of the process and it's the hardest part and it's the part that in the moment you don't really want to do but it's the part that makes you feel good because it's that pride factor knowing that you went through all that and no one can tell you ish about who you are because you know what you did. You didn't get it easily. You worked for it. And it kind of goes back to the whole feeling of someone who works, you know, 12 hours a day and they don't like doing that work, but they like the feeling it leaves them knowing that they work so hard for their family no one can ever tell them that, you know, they're not a good provider and they know it within their own heart that they're doing the right thing and spreading love in their role or, you know, with the cooking and all that, that maybe they don't like doing the cooking, but they like the feeling it leaves them within how they are showing love in an action that's right for their role. So it's the same thing with your self-development journey, becoming a man or a woman that you're actually proud to be or all the things that you've accomplished. It's all those things along the journey that no one really wants to do, but you did it. That's really, that's really what's going to build you. It's almost like at the top of a building, say there's a really beautiful gold statue up top, but brick by brick by brick has to lead you to that. And some people want to just have the gold statue up top for the sake of the gold statue because it's nice and it's pretty and it's shiny and they don't really have a care or respect for the brick by brick by brick that got built up. But the people who do go through the process, they have those bricks and it's their foundation for who they are because they are actually a new structure. They actually built themselves. And it's basically like... The act of doing all that gives them the sense and the self-worth because they built it. It's a real foundation they built it on. So they can have, I don't want to say ego, but you know, you know who you are. You know what you've gone through. You have the foundation. But when people want to have an ego or just, you know, kind of a pride of themselves and there's nothing to back it up, there's no bricks there that were built, there's no you know, foundation, it's a completely different energy anyway. And you can feel that because all this energy builds up, builds up, builds up and creates a new type of energy compared to there to someone who didn't do it. Oh, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that does make sense. (laughs) Because it's all about a buildup of energy, an accumulation of energy. Everything that you do is accumulating energy, whether you believe it or not. So If you're putting so much energy into this is a massive healing I'm going to undertake, then that's what's going to manifest because you put in so much energy, so much momentum behind it that it can't be stopped. And then from that point, once you can't be stopped, you can't be stopped. But you have to realize you have to give that push, that that big push. It's just like whenever you push something into space, really think about it this way. How much energy does it take? to take a rocket into space, an enormous amount of energy, right? Mm -hmm. But once it hits space, it'll go forever. Right. It'll go forever. Once it breaks through the atmosphere, that rocket will go forever. That is the kind of mentality you need to have whenever you're trying to achieve your goals. Whenever you need that push of momentum just to break through the atmosphere. And once you reach the stars, there's no telling how far you can go. You can go as far as you want to go with no more energy. It's all about momentum from that point forward. Millions of miles from that one push of momentum that you got on Earth just breaking through the atmosphere. 
But think about how many people stop before they break through the atmosphere. Right. Think about all the people that fail before they break through the atmosphere and they quit. They give up. They're never going to do it again from that point forward because they don't care anymore because they gave up. Do you want to be a quitter and be that kind of person? Or do you want to be the person that's not going to stop, that tells himself, I won't stop no matter what until I break through. And then once they have that breakthrough moment and once they go throughout the atmosphere, man, the sky is the limit. Literally. Totally. So, yeah, going back uh, relationship wise, what are you saying are the top traits of a a female in a relationship that are you need to have or look for a man of your caliber. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can just think about you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I already explained a little bit of what I'd want in a woman. So I, I basically said it. I want a woman that's going to be incredibly feminine. And a feminine trait to me is being a caregiver, someone that's gentle, someone that's going to take care of you. Now, a lot of women nowadays are masculine. They're going to fight you. They're going to argue you over every little thing. And it's proven that women that do this have more testosterone in their body than the average woman because you have to think about it in this way. Back in the olden times or back in the day, Men that have testosterone, they're going to argue with you over everything. They can't be ruled. That's why there's so many wars, so many splits of territory just being conquered. This person is being conquered over and over again because these men aren't taking no for an answer. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking to a woman and she's arguing with every little thing turns into a fight, that is not what I want because that's masculine energy. Now, I'm not saying you can't disagree with me. Of course, you can disagree. But let's just say I get angry and I get mad and you come to me. Hey, babe, just just relax. It's OK. It's cool. Don't worry about it. It's all right. You know, that's the kind of energy that men want. Not, oh, you look at her and next, you know, she's got an attitude. Then, <laughs> damn, you know, <laughs> then you're both that's mad. mad. <laughs> and that's that's what you want. And then you want a woman that's going to be there for you to take care of you whenever you get sick, whenever you get hurt, whenever there's something wrong. They can take care of that mental attitude of a man, that emotional standpoint. They can, you know, hug you up, grasp you up. It's that real love there. And then you want a woman that's going to cook. She's going to clean and she's going to be very agreeable. I want a woman that's going to be very agreeable because a lot of times I know what I'm talking about. So if you just listen to me, I can get us to where we need to be. And a lot of, but a lot of men, they're not there yet and they have to work on themselves. But if you work on yourselves as a man, then you can be in a position where you can tell your woman what to do and where to go. And then she's going to lead you and be right by your side. And I feel like that's the perfect scenario. If I have a woman that's all in her ego, she's talking, oh, da, 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 da. I don't believe this. I don't believe that. Oh, what about this? What about that? I, I don't want that. It's like I don't have time for that. Because mm -hmm. if I have the results to show that what I'm saying is right and I'm logically explaining it to you and you still don't see it and the only thing that you're thinking about is your ego and winning an argument, then that's wasting time. Because the only thing that matters is love and having that harmony for each other. Yeah, that's really good because it's like there's masculine energy and there's feminine energy and energy, any energy can be misconstrued and misinterpreted and used for the wrong thing if the ego takes a hold of it. But if we're talking about divine masculine and divine feminine, in the way that only can be used for the greater good of all and a perfect yin yang balance, they are meant to balance each other out because they're two different energies that can move together and push one the one way when it needs to and push one the other way when it needs to. Meaning masculine energy tends to be more pushing forward, a little more aggressive, a little more dominant. 
but these things don't have to be bad. For example, when you saw me <laughs> and I was just for whatever reason <laughs> shell shocked <laughs> yeah. and couldn't answer the question, Han gave that nudge, that push for me to move forward because if I stay more in the feminine energy and just be passive and and submissive, I would just give in and just not end up asking the question at all, answering, even, answering the question at all, even though it's a simple question. So when it's divine and it's not overtaken by the ego for it to be forceful, it's just a little nudge, a little and she was fighting that attitude, guys. She was fighting it. <laughs> to go ahead and do it. So this is where it's co-creating together the two different energies and so if someone's in a masculine type energy where they're getting a little pumped up a little overly aggressive a little maybe starting to get angry and a little worked up and then a feminine energy can come in and soothe the energy down calm it down make it more of a peaceful flowing energy and Sometimes people get in those energies and they need that opposite energy to help it become a balance. So yin and yang balancing, divine masculine, divine feminine balancing and helping all for the greater good. So any energy can get misinterpreted and used for a bad way, but it doesn't have to be and it's not supposed to be. So I don't want any energy out there to get a bad rep because of how it can be when the ego takes over it. And I think that's kind of happening a lot these days with masculine energy where it's deemed just an overall bad thing and it's not the case at all. No, you're absolutely right because once you have that balance, it's balance. It's not like one's overtaking the other. And because just because women are, if they're feminine, they're passive, it doesn't mean that they just don't talk or they don't say anything. Because and there's a lot of power in being passive and being submissive. And yeah, I think and having, you know, being subtle. Exactly. Because that can, it's like a wave, it's a current, it's a nice, slow wave that can make the big crashing wave just slow down because sometimes that needs to happen yeah because whenever kelly says something i'm considering everything she says if she says hey maybe we should do this maybe we should do that i'm i'm gonna i'm listening to it and women have a, a spiritual and psychic aspect to them where the, their psychic abilities are very strong if she says hey i got a bad feeling let's not do this I'm going to listen to her. Hey, I don't want you to go out tonight. I just, I feel it. Dude, let's do something else. All right, mm -hmm. cool. You know, she's looking me in my eyes. Hey, not tonight. You know, just trust me. Okay. Yeah. And that's like, how you have to have it. Like if, but if you're not listening, if you're just being a knucklehead, <laughs> you just want to be walking around. Oh, I'm big and strong. I'm big and bad man. Women have to listen to everything I say then that's whenever your ego is getting in control. Exactly. And, and that's the you. point right there. Because things tend to become so black and white and in a box in our modern society. And it's not you versus them. It's all of us versus all of our egos. And that's what we're not understanding. Yeah. It's just we all should love each other and wish that we only live as our highest self and defeat our egos. Because that's the only enemy here if you want to call it an enemy but yeah. who we truly are at our essence is all beautiful beautiful beings oh for sure and we're all supposed to be growing together we're all supposed to be expanding together and that's what we want to do all the time we're all mm -hmm. about growth we're all about expansion that's why we love if you guys are just listening to this if you're sharing it if you're watching it man it means the world to us because we love doing this and we're going to keep doing it every single friday a new episode drops Absolutely. So is there anything else we could say about the concept of love? I think we covered it, but we're going to keep going and keep talking about this. And once people keep submitting their questions and we'll start answering them, please email us or DM us on Instagram and we'll go from there. If you need apparently relationship advice, dating yeah. advice. No problem. <laughs> How to get ready for your big date. If you need to know how to keep a woman or keep a man, we can tell you that. <laughs> We've been together for over 10 years, so. Yep. 
All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll see you in the next one. See ya.